how does the game of basketball differ in each continent or in certain countries? <laughs> well, uh, it differs in, in, in many ways, uh, similar to here in the United States as well. I mean, the United States is based on an athletic, uh, athleticism, uh, up and down type of system, uh, based upon the athletes that are that are out there, right. you know, and uh, and that can depend on you know from from high school to AAU to to even different colleges and universities and how they play uh, as well, you know, and and in terms of the different areas of seeing how things are played out, each country has a different unique uh, a, a, a player has a different system of how the player is grown up. Uh, you know, for example, in the Middle East and Bahrain, there were not uh, very tall basketball players. And so you know, that's, that's just their, their environment and, and where they've grown up. So they became excellent shooters at the game, and that's how they learned how to shoot the ball and be quick. And, um, and so the, that style of basketball was played that way. Right. It didn't have a, a defensive mentality. It had a, a concept of who could shoot the ball and and uh, and be quick and because that was based on the athlete. Right. There are other places in the country, you know, where there's um, uh, exposure to the game. You know, the the, the exposure, you know, like uh, in Europe. Uh, there are certain places that play basketball a lot different. Yeah. During my time in Spain, you know, there was uh, the ATB uh, is, an, is an incredible league, but it has big basketball players. Right. You know, and now the NBA has realized, you know, there are some very tall Spaniards that play yep. uh, from point guard all the way to the center spot. And that's true of my time there as well. And those coaches uh, were very studious of the game, but a much different type of game. Not really high, uh, explosive, uh, up and down type of scoring. This is more of a systematic way of, of of executing some sort of offensive system where the the, the ball would be caught uh, and caught and 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 uh, you know the, the fundamentals of the pivoting and and because the system there is based on on a on an academy uh, where, you know, the players are, are drilled consistently and learning their footwork and going over things really, uh, not the same as here in the United States where the players here, for the most part, as they're growing up, are taught to play yeah. and play and compete and play games and play tournaments. There are kids here that play constantly in tournaments and, uh, they're not the same fundamentally sound. They may be more explosive. They may be very well. Um, they may be very uh, athletic, yeah. and for the most part, they very well are. But they lack the, the fundamental skills of the of the drill of of, uh, of footwork. And that's one thing that I notice uh, each time I've been into different different countries and different levels. Is what I pay attention to is the is the footwork. Yeah. You know, can they separate for their jump shot? How do they move down the sideline? And uh, and and those that have gone through those academies, then therefore their offensive skills are a lot better. Right. And then those coaches then can implement various systems of play because the athlete can adjust and learn it. Yeah. Um, where the frustration comes in for some of the coaches is that if the athlete is not fundamentally sound, uh, then they're left to to uh, dribble, drive, and create on their based on their athleticism. Yeah. And uh, and sometimes you see the the, the stark contrast in style, uh, uh, where. You know, one one league in the world will play at 50 to 60, maybe 70 points maximum point production, yeah. and another part of the world 
the the totals are in the nineties and hundreds, you know, and they're just way up there, high scoring. And uh, which one is right? Uh, they're all they're all right. You know, it just depends on the athlete and and the level of attention that's been given uh, to that player uh, through his through his career. Yeah. And uh, the one thing that I know is that you know the coaches around the world they 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 study the game. They take a lot of exams. They want to learn. They want to do a lot of things um, to help them improve their craft. And, uh, mm-hmm. and for that, you know, I'm very, uh, you know, I, I am always amazed when I see other parts and, and the coaches and how dedicated they are to their craft. Yeah. Do you see a, a crossover of the teaching, the coaching techniques, and playing styles occurring around the world? Well, you know, there it's it's really predicated on you know the the world basketball thing, you know. So, for example, uh, I think in '96, you know, Argentina wins uh, wins the world basketball championship and yeah. changed the changed the landscape. All of a sudden, you know, the, the Argentinians were now considered you know the top basketball players because they had won that. Uh, they had a different a different way of approaching the game. You know, they, they were systematic. They kept the teams together. They drilled. They, they were based on that academy. Yeah. And uh, and their coaches were then highly sought after because they thought, okay, well, now the Argentinians play this certain style. This is what we want. And prior to that, you know, America was, was, the, was the king. You know, they had never lost, and they had played in all these, uh, events with basically college players and never had used our pro athletes and these other countries were using their pro athletes. Yeah. And it was a wake-up call. Right. It was a, it was a shocker because it happened here in Indiana and completely changed the landscape of how the USA went, approached basketball, the discussion that went on and still continues on to this day. Uh, you know, since then, U- USA has really dedicated itself to to, to play in foreign basketball. They really go after it now. They approach it the same way. They try to keep the players together. They try to commit them to being on a team for a period of years. Right. And it has paid off. You know, the Dream Team went uh, collectively and absolutely destroyed everybody in the gold medal. Yeah. And then this the past year, uh, they returned back and, and, and continued that, that same season. Of, of gaining a gold medal. And it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, uh, but, you know, throughout the world, you know, Spain had also won in some of these world championships. And it's the same thing. Those Spanish coaches were, were sought after. The Spanish player was receiving uh, tremendous attention throughout the world and, and went into the NBA. Yeah. And if you look at the NBA rosters, you see Spanish players, you see Argentinian players. Yeah. And, and you see a mixture here and there of some other European athletes. Uh, and uh, it's, the game has just completely evolved. Yeah. Uh, there, is a, there is a true dedication to it. And, you know, I'm sure if you were to speak to maybe even some NBA general managers, you know, they'll tell you, you know, that uh, the European, various European players are very skilled, man. They can really do these certain things really well. The American is an absolute athlete. He's learned how to uh, use the athleticism. And it, it varies uh, roster to roster on the NBA as to what they're, what they're looking for and who they sign. And, and the same is true even with, uh, uh, um, you know, us, us, you know, during our time at Oregon State, you know, we had some foreign players who were very skilled. And, you know, we would go and the other skilled athletic guy at UCLA. Yeah. Really two different styles of country. And, uh, you know, there's still something to be said about that athlete. You know, that athlete is hard to stop. Yeah. You know, but if that, and that's the discussion, if that athlete was to be drilled and skilled and tremendously paid attention to his fundamentals, how much better could he be? And, uh, right. And that's why Team USA really uh, kind of stresses these basketball festivals 
They try to keep the top 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds all together. They play a four events uh, together to keep the team USA. Uh, try to keep them on top of the world in terms of basketball goes 